Welcome back to another edition of Joe's Chores Are Done, right here in the Ranton Chair. Smoking a filter dub and oom in place of the old lucky strike here. Sorting the world's problems out while Mama's in the shower. Hooray. That's the last thing I have to do today besides watch a movie. <coughs> well, I was texting a friend back and forth. He showed me uh, one of them new Gatling-type triggers for the AR-15. And, of course, you know how I am about my weaponized autism. And I have strong opinions about subjects and firearms. And I guess that's why I'm making a video. See, the AR-15 is just one of those rifles either love or hate. And full disclosure, I was never a fan of the AR-15 until I had one for a work rifle. Way back in the early days of when you could still buy a fixed carry handle 6920 at Walmart. Yes, I'm that old. I'm almost 35. It wasn't that many years ago, trust me. So, I grew up with the AK rifle because it was poor white trash just like I am. Okay, my first AK, and certainly not my last, was a Chinese Mac 90 I actually converted back to a Type 56. It did everything but make it an NFA item, okay? I swapped out the gas block for a real one with the bayonet lug. I fucking kind of threaded the barrel as closely as I could and put the fucking slant brake on it. I put some pretty Bakelite furniture because it was a straight cut, not a slant cut. And yes, this was even back during the assault weapons ban I started this project. That's how old I am. Okay? So, like I said, I love the AK. Don't get me wrong. But this ain't what this video is about. So, Rock, Armed Ape, all you guys that are like super into the AK, don't give me any shit. Alright? Y'all know I love me some commie guns. Just like I love me some commie girls and I love me some commie booze. Okay? That's the only three good things to come from communism besides the collapse of it. The surplus... Underfed girls that speak zero English and cheap alcohol. All right. So, that being said, let's start. So, you want to buy an AR 15. Well, there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions out there, and you're going to hear mine. Okay. A carbine length gun in 5.56 is the way to go 16 inch barrel, carbine gas with a fixed A post style sight. And you say, well, why would you do that? They're reliable, they're safe, they're durable, and they're basically indestructible. Plus, you want a bayonet lug, right? Who doesn't? Now, if you want to go the full 14.5 pinned and welded barrel, I support you in that endeavor. And that's ultimately where mine's going to end up someday when I get disposable income. Because I'd like the bayonet without the adapter, all right? Sue me. I, I like style points and bonus points, okay? Now, the parts that matter on your AR-15 are the furniture, Right? You want the standard furniture with the heat shield in it. There's no need to go to the cheese grater guns because you're not going to like it. It's going to get real hot under fire, and they're going to cut the piss out of your hand. And they're also a lot heavier. Okay? If you're like me and you got big hands, you're going to hate the A2 grip. So you want to swap it out for something like an ergo grip. Same goes for the old-style carbine stocks. You're not going to like the way they feel in your shoulder. So you want to swap it out for an old M1-style Car 15 stock if you're like me. But the original M4 stock is okay. All right? It'll get you where you need to go. Now, let's say you're running a flat top like 99% of America does. I know I'm kinky. Yeah, I like my old fixed carry handle. Fucking sue me. Uh, indigestion. Excuse me. Oh, I had a big breakfast. Anyway, you're going to want to run a red dot or an LPVO. Uh, if you're on an LPVO, run it on the zero setting or the one setting. And then dial it in as you need it. If you run a red dot, co-witness it with your front sight and get a flip-up rear sight, okay? If you're going to run a combat rifle and you choose not to run a bayonet, you're going to want a flashlight on it because it's why? It's dark half the time. But I'm going to focus on the internal parts that you need to upgrade your rifle to make it as bulletproof as possible, indestructible, and maintenance-free, all right? The first thing you want to do is you're going to want to write this down. You want what's called a drop-in cassette trigger. Now, I'm not paid by any of these people, nor would I accept money from them. Uh, you know, they're not Lucky Strike, and they're certainly not Stroika Vodka. But, you know, if gun companies want to give me free parts, I will fucking abuse the piss out of them, and I will give you honest opinions whether you like it or not. So, I have a brand called CMC, all right? Mine's a drop-in 3.5-pound trigger. 
that's curved. I like the curved triggers. Y'all like straight triggers. That's fine. It's just a personal preference. I like curved. All right. And there's a couple of benefits that a drop in cassette trigger has. One, it's one piece, so you don't have to fiddle around with springs. Number two, they come with anti walk pins, which means you're not going to have any hammer or trigger walk on your pin. And that can lead to light strikes and malfunctions in addition to basically breaking your rifle in the field. That's a rare occurrence, but it can happen, okay? And number three, you're just not going to have to dick with it. But here's the thing. These binary triggers and these Hellfire triggers and these Gatling triggers, they're cool for the range. But you want something about three and a half pounds that's not a mil-spec trigger but is a drop-in. Okay, because we're not running machine guns here. If it was different, I'd say run standard M16A1 fire controls. But unfortunately, we live in the land of... Uh, you know, the post-constitution here, and we have to work with the tools we got, unless you have a milling machine and are willing to do prison time if you get caught. With a three and a half pound trigger, it's safe enough you can carry it loaded, and if you drop it, the rifle's not going to shoot a hole in something, okay? But it's light enough that you can get them through the same hole at 200 yards with a little bit of practice and some good double taps, all right? Now, I'm rocking an old medium government profile barrel, which means it's not quite a pencil barrel, so when you get it hot, it's not going to wander the group around, although the old pencil barrels work fine. And it's not a heavy profile barrel, which is unbalanced and a little bit top-heavy and unwieldy, okay? Like I said, you're going to want to find your happy medium here. This is what works for me. But this cassette trigger makes your life better, so that's upgrade number one. Upgrade number two. You want what's called a full profile bolt carrier group, which means it doesn't have the tail milled out. Now, like I said, you're not running a machine gun here, but what it does is it increases the weight of the bolt, which means you're going to have less out of battery experiences in the malfunction department. You're going to have less light strikes. You're going to want an upgraded spring in your buffer and a regular carbine buffer. I'm assuming this is what you're running as a carbine. This is what we're talking about because it eliminates what's called bolt bounce and out of battery malfunctions. You're gonna to want to make sure it's timed for your NATO spec ammunition, which by the way, you should be running either M193 ball or M855 ball, okay? That should be your practice ammo, that should be your duty ammo. Why? Because it works well enough, it beats the piss out of body armor inside of 300 yards, and inside 100 yards, even in an AR pistol, it still shatters most ceramic body armor, right? This is what you want. Okay, so after you've got a nice nitrided or even NCAD bolt carrier group, right? You know, get as fancy with it as you want, but like I said, nitrided is the way to go. It's easy to clean and it holds lube better. You're going to want to make sure that all the parts in the said premium bolt carrier group are upgraded, right? Upgraded extractor spring, upgraded ejector spring, a nice titanium firing pin if you want, but honestly, the old stainless steel ones work just fine and they're actually more reliable, okay? You're going to want an extended charging handle. You may say, well, what's wrong with mil spec? There's nothing wrong with mil spec unless you have arthritis like I do, which means you can roll the rifle over to one side and take your off hand and clear any malfunction. Get the bitch out of there and fucking get the bolt home, right? That's how they work. Now, I wouldn't worry about ambi safety controls unless you're wrong-handed. Your standard safety will work just fine. Okay? So once you have a good set of furniture on there you like, a drop-in cassette trigger, which I consider a mandatory upgrade, a premium full-profile bolt carrier group, and an extended charging handle, it doesn't really matter what kind of a barrel you have. It doesn't matter what kind of a sights you have. As long as it's dialed in for your gun and your ammunition and it runs reliably, it's good to go. You know, like I said, you want to add a weapon light if you plan on fighting with it. But other than that, people overcomplicate the AR-15 and make it something it was not meant to be. I'm going to tell you why. AK rifles are about eight, nine pounds. Empty, okay? My old school fixed carry handle A2 carbine comes in under seven with a full 20 round magazine and you can stick one finger under the carry handle and balance the whole gun loaded all right now i'm not saying don't go down the rabbit hole i'm not saying don't get side chargers and side and rear chargers like some of the bear creek stuff and that's another thing people tell you bear creek is garbage palmetto state armory stuff is garbage you know, uh, your Anderson stuff is garbage. That's that's entirely poppycock, 
all right? They're just the same receivers built in the same factories by the same forgings, same manufacturers that every other thing is. You know, the roll mark on your lower is far less important than the parts you put in it, all right? The same goes for your upper. If you have a no-name generic upper, but you have a good barrel in it, and it's put together right, and everything's torqued down correctly, you're fine. Another common myth about the AR-15 is they're not durable. They don't hold up over time. That is horseshit. That rifle I have, as long as I don't get it too hot and bust a gas tube, or get the barrel sagging, will outlast me, my kids, and my grandkids with some basic care, some lubrication, some cleaning, okay? And not only that, but if you get the full pull profile bolt carrier group and a nice upper, if you ever do get in a situation where, let's say, you have a machine gun lower, you can stick your nice upper that's dialed in the way you want it on the full auto trigger pack, and it will run like a machine gun. Okay, I'm not telling you to go out with your milling machine and break the law. Now, that's on you if you want to do it. Don't tell them I told you to do so because I told you not to. I probably made a video like this before, but I figured while I was talking about it with one of my friends, it might as well uh, be something for you, the viewer at home. But there are so many myths that the AR-15 is not drop safe. That's horse shit. There's so many myths that the AR-15 doesn't do well in the mud, which is also horse shit. The only thing the AR-15 does not really like is sand, and that's a lubrication issue, okay? If you're in the desert, use dry lube. If you're in the snow, use wet lube, okay? If you're in extreme cold, like what happens in rural Idaho in January, use synthetic lube because natural lubrication freezes, okay? I know I've seen this happen. Other than that, you know, you want a spare set of gas rings or a bolt rebuild kit. You want a spare firing pin. Maybe a spare trigger pack, maybe a spare bolt carrier group, maybe a spare charging handle, maybe a spare buffer ring or buffer weight and a buffer spring. Other than that, what you want on your rifle is a standard two point sling. Don't get a three point because you'll tie yourself up like that dirty Frenchman did in that in range TV video, and don't get a one point sling. I know one point slings look cool, but here's the thing if you have to run with your rifle, you're going to hit yourself in the dick with a one-point sling. That's why they call them dick whackers. Yes, look it up. Dick whacker is an industry term, all right? And even if you don't hit yourself in the dick with it, let's say you're running an AR pistol, if you get your rifle hot and you're wearing shorts, that flash hydrant or muzzle brake on the front end, which, by the way, I run an old A2 birdcage. It works just fine, okay? It does all of the things it needs to do. You will burn yourself and give yourself a third-degree idiot burn, all right? And if you like the video on helpful tips and tricks for the AR-15, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more horse shit down the way, because, you know, that's the way we do things. And if you don't, I don't care. Eat my shorts. And like I said, for those of you that are AK purists out there, I'm all about that 545 AK life, man. I want myself a crank or one of those Romanian 545s with a dong, you know, and some nice cheesy Bakelite furniture, because that's just the way God intended a rifle to be. But I ain't got the money for this. And if you made it to the end of the video... Say hi, Billy, because the Cessna plane flies overhead. And uh, I'm going to go back inside. It's cold. So have a wonderful day. God bless. And Saturday can eat my fucking shorts.